Okay, we are going to talk about prokaryotic cells structure and function. So quick review, we know that eukaryotic cells, this is what we've been talking about when we talk about plant and animal cells. We know eukaryotic cells, they have nuclei or nucleus, and some have cell walls, mainly the ones in plants. Eukaryotic cells make up some unicellular organisms and all multicellular organisms. So all organisms that are made of more than one cell are made of eukaryotic cells. Now prokaryotic cells is something I brushed on, but we really haven't talked about too much. Prokaryotic cells are much simpler than eukaryotic cells. They don't have a nucleus. Um, they always have cell walls. They are always single-celled, so there is no multicellular prokaryotic organisms. And they have no membrane-bound organelles, things like the Golgi body or smoother, rough endoplasmic reticulum. So here's a quick thing. So here's our prokaryotic cell. And notice it just looks a lot simpler. There aren't as many compartments. There are lots of small dots and stuff, but that's pretty much it. Here's the eukaryotic cell, and it has a lot more things in it. And there are things that we've been learning about, like the vacuole and the Golgi apparatus. We have chromatin and the nucleolus with the nucleus and then a nuclear envelope, endoplasmic reticulum, all this stuff. And so this is a super organized cell. So there are things very compartmentalized, and they have their own spots, um, and they all do their own specific functions. But if you look at the prokaryotic cell, it's pretty much just open space in here aside from this, which actually is the chromosomes. So all the stuff that's trapped in the nucleus in a eukaryotic cell is just floating around freely in a prokaryotic cell. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the structures that are found in a prokaryotic cell. Some of them are the same as in a eukaryotic cell. So prokaryotic cells as we remember, are unicellular or one-celled organisms, and they don't have a nucleus or other membrane-bound organelles. An example of a prokaryotic organism would be bacteria. So here's a couple pictures of some bacteria. Okay, and now here's the basic structure. So we have this outer area, and then we have little hairs that kind of stick out of it. We've got a couple of layers on the outside. We've got our chromosomes. We've got a lot of free area, a couple more pieces of chromosomes just randomly floating around. So not very organized at all. So let's talk about the structure. So this red part that surrounds the entire cell, notice how thick it is. Um, that's the capsule. So bacteria have capsules or slime layers. And basically, uh, this is just a sticky layer around it that is going to allow it to cause disease. So when you get sick and you have a bacterial infection, Really, it's this slime layer that is going to initially cause the infection. Right inside the slime layer, we have our cell wall. It's the same kind of cell wall that is in plant cells, um, except obviously this is a prokaryotic organism. And it does the same thing as it does in plant cells. It surrounds the plasma membrane and gives the cell its shape, as well as preventing water from entering the cell unnecessarily. So basically it stops the cell from bursting or popping. Um, and then inside the cell wall we have our plasma membrane and that does exactly the same thing as it does in eukaryotic organism. It surrounds the cell and tells um, the cell what can go in and what can go out. Okay, we also have ribosomes. These do the exact same thing as they do in eukaryotic cells, except in eukaryotic cells remember that they can either be um, free floating like in the cytoplasm or they can be bound to the endoplasmic reticulum which makes rough endoplasmic reticulum um, but in prokaryotic cells they're just all free floating in the cytoplasm and remember ribosomes are the site of protein synthesis so that's where our proteins are made next we have chromosomes this is a single DNA molecule in prokaryotes, it's not enclosed in a nucleus because there is no nucleus, and it contains most of the genetic information. So most of the cell's genetic information is located in this chromosome right here. We also have plasmids, which are genes separate from chromosomes, which can carry antibiotic-resistant genes. So these are just little tiny additions of genetic information that sometimes make the bacteria unable to be killed by um, antibiotics. 
And then finally, we have our cytoplasm, which serves the exact same purpose as it does in eukaryotic cells. Just the jelly-like fluid, it fills the cell, and it kind of cushions everything and keeps everything where it should be. Okay, so support and locomotion. So in a prokaryotic cell, remember it's unicellular. So if it doesn't have a way to get around, it's kind of just stuck where it is, meaning if there's not enough nutrients, it's not going to get nutrients. If there's not enough water, it's not going to get water. So it's really important that they have some sort of support or locomotion. They use this thing called a flagella, which we talked about because some eukaryotic cells also have them, and some bacteria have them, and they're those whip-like projections that enable them to move. Um, if you ever hear me say flagellum, that is a single one. Flagella is more than one. And then you have pillus. So um, essentially cilia is what we call them in eukaryotic cells, but um, they're a little different in prokaryotic cells. These are actually extensions of the plasma membrane, and they help a cell stick to a surface. So if it doesn't want to be washed away by whatever fluid it's in or anything, it uses these pili to kind of like attached to it essentially. It's like a little bridge and that bridge is where um, the bacteria can exchange um, information either with the um, area around it or with other bacterial cells. Um, so yeah, that is support and locomotion and that is prokaryotic cells. I hope that made sense.